Bethesda. Oh, Bethesda. My feelings for them at this point are like an ex-girlfriend, a studio that I used to love and adore. I used to consider them my favorite studio. If I wasn't playing Halo 3 or Call of Duty with the boys. Shut the fuck up. You, you know you're hacking, you. You're a fucking pussy. I was hanging out with Bethesda, and man, our relationship, it was beautiful. But now, there's a lot of disappointment, a lot of hurt. A lot of wondering what could have been. What could have been if Bethesda wasn't a lying, greedy whore. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. These NPCs are not scripted. Sorry, getting emotional there. Even though my relationship with Bethesda has been tough, I still find myself going back and enjoying that sweet, sweet booty. And although the future is uncertain and I must move on, I can still be happy about the experiences that I've had. So with all that, I'm here to go ahead and rank all the Bethesda action RPGs. Just please don't tell FromSoft. Hello y'all. I'm Troy, and uh, yeah, sorry if that intro really opened some scars for you. It was tough for me too. But yeah, you know, I loved Bethesda. In like a 10 year period from 2006 to 2016, they were not only my favorite single player studio, but definitely were industry darlings as well. My very first RPG I ever played, and one of the games that got me into gaming was 2006's Oblivion, which you know, I would have been 10 years old at the time, so. Just a wee lad, but regardless, I owe a lot of my personal gaming journey to Bethesda. So yeah, say what you will about them now. And yeah, just to be clear, they have been fucking up. You cannot deny the legacy that Bethesda has created. Multiple massive hits, they still have a surprisingly large community. The ancient frail man that is Skyrim still has a staggering player count to this day. So because we have some Starfield DLC coming out here soon and the Fallout show has kind of reinvigorated interest in that IP, which going on record, I think the show is great. You know, I thought it would be fun to go back and play some of the older Bethesda games and make a tier list. And yeah, I did go back and play the vanilla version of every game on this tier list. And I gotta say, I had a surprisingly good time doing it. There is a reason why Bethesda was so popular back then and still is to this day. But before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or my content, please, please like and subscribe. I make all types of gaming content, so come on in and join the fun. Also, do not be shy, drop a comment and let me know what your thoughts are on the tier list or Bethesda. Do you like their older games or because they've been just dropping the bag lately? Is the nostalgia soured? Or maybe you love their new shit. I don't know. All right, first I wanna go ahead and lay down the rules for this here tier list. I'll be ranking each of Bethesda's action RPG games, which is really just their Elder Scrolls and Fallout games and Starfield. I will be considering DLC as it's a big part of the Bethesda game experience, as well as the legacy of the game as a whole. Now I won't be ranking their super old Elder Scrolls games, anything before 2002's more wind because, well, I've never played them and I don't really have the time to play them. The first two Elder Scrolls games are just very different and I think a bit too old to properly compare on this tier list. And I also am extremely excited to announce our special guest for this tier list. Drum roll please. Fallout New Vegas. Now New Vegas is not a Bethesda developed game. It was developed by Obsidian. However, it was published by Bethesda, as well as created in the same engine as Fallout 3, so it very much plays and feels exactly like a Bethesda RPG. And New Vegas is very interesting to talk about and compare to its Bethesda developed peers. So I thought it would be fun to include it here on the tier list and you know, we'll dive more into that later. Also, I'll quickly mention, I won't be including Elder Scrolls Online because well, that's a full on MMORPG. I don't really like MMOs, not really my cup of tea, so I've never played it. Now I'll quickly go over the tier list itself and what each tier means to me. S tier, that's a masterpiece, a near perfect RPG and 
you know, anywhere between like a nine and 10 score. It's a classic game and a must play Bethesda title. A tier would be great. These games are still very, very good, but perhaps have one or two things that kind of hold it back. B tier is good, still a good game, but there's probably a handful of weaknesses. C tier, you're starting to get into the mid territory, you know, just mediocre or at best, maybe decent. There are issues and honestly, I wouldn't bother playing these games now unless something particular about it really interests you or if you just really love Bethesda games and can't get enough. F tier, trash. These games should never be played under any circumstances. Avoid them. All right, finally, let's go ahead and get into this tier list, baby. I'll be going through chronologically to keep you on your toes. So that means we are starting with 2002's Morrowind. This actually wasn't my first Elder Scrolls game. That was Oblivion and I first played Morrowind shortly after playing Oblivion back in 2006 or seven, as I just needed to get more of this Elder Scrolls universe into my veins. Morrowind is probably the Elder Scrolls game that I have played the least, but I have some very fond memories of, and I very much respect Morrowind. So because of that, Morrowind gets an A tier, and I will explain why I think that in just a minute. But before we get comments saying like, bro, you gotta mod it, you gotta mod it. Yes, obviously there are tons of mods for all the Bethesda titles that can probably fix nearly all the issues. But for this tier list, I played and ranked each game in its vanilla state. So trying to consider mods would just have too many variables. So back to Morrowind, it does have some issues. The gameplay and graphics have aged very poorly. I mean, even for its time, these aspects weren't considered great. So booting it up now and playing it, I was very much reminded of that. I'll be straight up, Morrowind is not for everyone. It's good, but it's hard for me to recommend. But when Morrowind hits, it hits hard. Hard. Now, the Elder Scrolls, and to an extent just RPGs in general, are usually not played for great graphics and gameplay. Morrowind is very much a great RPG. The story, lore, and the world are all fantastic. Definitely the best main story in the Elder Scrolls, arguably one of the best in gaming period. There's just a sense of ambiguity in Morrowind's story and world that is not present in Oblivion and Skyrim. I'm not going to straight up spoil anything because a lot of people probably haven't played this game, but Morrowind's story and world is all very morally gray. There's a lot of mystery and things aren't always clear about what's true and what's not. In that sense, it's truly up to the player to decide and role play what they believe to be true. As the player, you really get to insert yourself into the story however you see fit. There's also this great sense of being lost in this foreign and alien landscape that is surprisingly immersive. Like when Morrowind is confusing because of the deep RPG systems or complex story, it almost makes sense in a way because the island of Vardenfell is so alien. The feelings that you have fit the atmosphere. And a lot of this ambiguity and complexity is lost in Oblivion and even more so in Skyrim. You know, not to say those are worse games, but I'm just trying to point out what makes Morrowind so special. So with all that, yes, Morrowind is very dated. Yes, the gameplay is kind of hot ass. Yes, it will not be for everyone. But if you can look past these things, as some gamers can, there is a deep and rewarding RPG beneath it with an extremely unique setting and story. So because of that, Morrowind, for me, it's gonna sit nicely in A tier. Come on over here, come on over here. No, you flipped me off. Come on, coward. No, 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 come on. You're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud. All right, now, Oblivion. I'm gonna shut close the jaws of Oblivion or whatever the fucking emperor says. This one has a special place in my heart because, well, it's my first Elder Scrolls game, my first Bethesda game, hell, my first RPG. Oblivion is what got me into RPGs. However, Oblivion does miss the S tier and it sits in A tier for me. It is a great game, but it does have one massive issue, especially the vanilla version, the leveling and enemy scaling. The class system and how you level up is just so counterintuitive and frustrating. To elaborate a bit, I won't go too deep as 
this isn't a guide, but essentially it's more efficient to have skills that you use frequently be set as minor skills and have major skills be things that you don't use. So that way you can better control when you level up. Since being able to control when you level up means you can ensure your attribute increases are maxed out. Oh, yes. It sounds dumb, right? I'm not sure if they thought this was clever or just a really bad oversight, but yeah, it's it's terrible. It's the same as more wins, but it's way more of a problem in Oblivion because the enemies scale with you. So by the later levels, if you have been leveling super efficiently, your build will be hot ass. And what really frustrates me is nearly everything else in Oblivion is great. It's quirky, yes, but Oblivion's goofiness is what gives it its unique character and it surprisingly works well. Yeah, it just works. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. The main story, although shorter and not quite as intriguing as Morrowind's, is still pretty good. There's a little bit of nuance still present that is even further lost in later games, but the guilds and the side quests are where Oblivion truly shines, particularly the guilds, which are just a big part of any of the Elder Scrolls games. Finding and joining these cool factions I think as a package, they're the best here in Oblivion. Every guild is a banger for one reason or another, whether it be the exciting quest lines, the great perks and rewards, or hell, both. Fuck, even the arena is fun, which is only just a really basic set of quests where you simply fight some enemies in an arena. The land of Cyrodiil also just, the land of Cyrodiil just feels alive and interesting. And I think this isn't quite captured the same way in other Elder Scrolls games. This is in large part due to the radiant AI. This is what also gives Oblivion its meme ability. And it's funny because this system, it's janky as fuck, but for some reason, it just, it just works. It's all part of the charm. Now, the gameplay isn't very good in Oblivion, but it does take a step up from Morrowind. So I think Oblivion sits in a nice middle spot between crunchy RPG and action gameplay. And I gotta mention, Oblivion, it probably has the single best DLC that Bethesda has ever created in the Shivering Isles. The Shivering Isles just takes the goofy tone of Oblivion and embraces it turns it up to 10 and delivers a fantastic expansion. Playing through Oblivion now, you know, yeah, it is dated, but you just can't help but love the world and the quests and how goofy it is. It'll always be my first RPG and I love Oblivion for that, so I'm happy to give it a very, very, very solid A tier. Heard any news from the other provinces? Nothing I'd like to talk about. Good to know. Glathia is acting even stranger than usual, don't you think? Of course not. What? I think we're in for All right, baby, here we are. 2008's Fallout 3, the first Fallout game on the list here. War. War never changes, and neither does my opinion about Fallout 3. For me, this is an instant S tier. I love Fallout 3. I think it's a phenomenal video game. I'm happy to see this game and the IP as a whole getting some well-deserved attention because of the also phenomenal TV show. Now, the only thing I might be able to critique Fallout 3 is the writing and choices available are a bit more black and white. I'm really reaching here. There isn't, there isn't as many varied choices present as perhaps some of the later games that we will get to. If you know, you know. You are usually presented with just kind of basic good versus evil, and that's about it. Also, the shooting and gunplay isn't the best, but that definitely gets saved and mitigated because of VATS, which is always a blast to use in a Fallout staple. And Fallout 3 kind of created VATS as we know it today with the mix of first person gameplay and, you know, stopping and being able to pick your targets. And now that's about where the criticisms end because Fallout 3 is great in nearly every other category. Even if there is a lack of nuanced choices in the quests, 
they're still fantastic. What you are served here is still delicious. How fun is it to blow up Megaton with a view from Tenpenny Tower? Always gonna bang. The Capital Wasteland is arguably the best setting in a Fallout game. Like it's our nation's capital, God bless. So the Americana that Fallout is known for feels right at home here. And it sets you up for some awesome and goofy quests like stealing the Declaration of Independence. Also the tone and atmosphere of Fallout 3 is phenomenal. Yes, there are still goofy moments to kind of break things up, but for the most part, the Capital Wasteland feels like the most post-apocalyptic out of the Fallout games. You can feel the residents struggle to survive against these suffocating forces around them. Now, the leveling system in the Fallout series in my opinion, has always been much better than in the Elder Scrolls. I enjoy being able to pick exactly where my points go, and the perk system is so much more fun and interesting. In Fallout 3, it's fantastic. However, I've heard it criticized because it can easily be broken if you know what you're doing, and that is true. But for me, that's not really entirely a negative. I mostly just play Bethesda games for fun. I do like a bit of a challenge, but hell, sometimes I'm kind of down to pick that OP build. If I want a harder game, I'll do a harder build. Fallout 3 was the third Bethesda title I ever played, and I remember once I touched that, I was like, damn, these guys know how to make a fucking game. And I've been a fan of Bethesda ever since. I just kind of fell in love with their formula. So because of that, Fallout 3 is very easily an S tier and one of my favorite Bethesda games. And one of my favorite games of all time. Nice. All right, now we have the special guest for this tier list, 2010's Fallout New Vegas, which is published by Bethesda, but was developed by Obsidian Entertainment. Essentially, Bethesda gave Obsidian the rights to develop a spinoff. And goddamn did Obsidian cook, baby. Fallout New Vegas is one of my favorite RPGs and widely considered one of the best RPGs of all time. If you don't give that an instant S tier, you're fucking crazy, easily. However, I do need to say, I know I uh, said I played each game vanilla for this tier list, and that was a lie. The lie detective determined that was a lie. Oh! I have to play New Vegas with mods because it constantly crashes on my PC. They are mostly stability mods, but a few affected the visuals and some quality of life. Just be warned, this game does have issues on PC, as do a lot of the older titles though, so I can't really hold it against it too much. However, I played this game a fuck ton on the Xbox 360 back in the day, so trust me, I do know what the true vanilla is like. Now, what makes New Vegas so special? Well, Obsidian essentially took the phenomenal Fallout 3 and improved on a lot of its parts. What most will applaud when discussing New Vegas is the story and writing. Bethesda games typically have a linear main quest line or maybe at best branching you sort of work through one quest after another with a few choices to make new vegas is more like a complicated web of quests and factions that all interact with one another there are a few things and events that sort of tie it all together but how these play out is entirely up to your actions or perhaps even your inaction. And there are many more choices here rather than just simply good versus evil. Fallout New Vegas has a wide spectrum of choice and it's not always clear what exactly is good or evil. And it's because of this complex structure that the story and the world feel very organic. And honestly, there's nothing quite like New Vegas to this day. Actually, Baldur's Gate 3 is probably the closest thing that we've seen to New Vegas since New Vegas, kind of how the story evolves. The dialogue and writing in New Vegas is also fantastic with a ton of skill checks outside of just speech. New Vegas as a whole really leans into the RPG side with, I'm not sure why other Bethesda games are more hesitant to do this, but it's another reason why New Vegas is so special. And playthroughs might play out completely differently depending on your build. The leveling and character progression, I believe is the best in New Vegas out of any of the Fallout series. The change from a perk every level to every other made perks more impactful and made it less easy to just make broken builds and or like a jack of all trades. This forces the player to min max a bit 
which enhances role playing and replayability. Fuck, New Vegas even improves the gunplay from Fallout 3 ever so slightly by including some mediocre iron sights. <laughs> and there's more too. There's like a survivor mode, the crafting and the gun customization. Oh, and the DLC. My god, the DLC in New Vegas slaps. Usually in Bethesda games, there's like one or two good DLCs that have, a, you know, a handful. New Vegas Every single one is a banger. Dead Money might be the best Fallout DLC, period. And now this isn't to say that New Vegas is completely perfect. The world and tone can feel a bit inconsistent at times. Also, the game is just extremely buggy even to this day. Obviously, I can't really run the vanilla version. And you know, Obsidian only had 18 months to develop this game, which is very impressive. It blows my mind to this day but you can feel that some of the parts might be rushed a bit. However, these minor issues can be very easily overlooked when seeing the overwhelming positives. So because of that, New Vegas very much gets an S tier from me because, well, the truth is, the game was rigged from the start. From where you're look maxing, it must seem like a baby grunt sized hit of copium. But the skib deal is, the Giat was rizzed from the start. Deadass. War stays the same. On God. Now, before we move on, let's address the elephant in the room. No, not that Skyrim is next, but that Fallout 3 and New Vegas are both in my S tier. Which do I think is better? This is a question older than time itself, and a very heated topic of debate on the internet. And I will address that near the end of this video, once I give some final thoughts and conclusions, so stay tuned. But until then, we have 2011's the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the most famous or perhaps infamous Bethesda title, the one game to rule them all. And for me, Skyrim, it deserves an A tier. It does. And interestingly, all the Elder Scrolls games are an A tier. We will also discuss this later. What do I even say about Skyrim? Everyone knows what this game is. It is a very, it was a very powerful gaming phenomenon back when it was released. And Skyrim is probably the game I have ever been and will ever be the most excited about. And when it released at the time I was in high school, I fucking played that game for at least a month or two straight. Me and, and all my friends, we were all playing Skyrim, and the ones that weren't were probably like, why haven't like 70% of my dude friends been hanging out with me? Where is everybody? <laughs> and yeah, it, it did not disappoint. I considered it my favorite game for quite some time. But as I've gotten older, not only have those rose tinted glasses came off, but my tastes have also matured. So with that, going back and playing Skyrim now, I do get disappointed by the lack of RPG systems present. There is very little meaningful choice. The progression and the leveling is better than Oblivion because it's not counterintuitive, but on the same side, it's quite dumbed down. There is no class system anymore, so anyone can really do anything if they do it enough. On the flip side though, Skyrim is very easily accessible. It's always easy to jump back into this world because it's intuitive and it's easy to have fun. I think this is for a few reasons. For one, the physical world of Skyrim is amazing. The land is varied and beautiful, especially in its newest version. Just exploring and getting lost in Skyrim's wilderness still gives me a sense of childlike wonder to this day. And the other big reason being the gameplay and combat is the best here in Skyrim than any of the other Elder Scrolls games. The melee combat, you know, it is relatively simple. However, it feels so much better than its peers and even better than the newest Bethesda titles. They still haven't been able to do melee combat as good as they did in Skyrim, ever. In ranged combat and throwing spells, that's very satisfying as well. However, the complexity and amount of magic did take a step back here, which was disappointing. Now though the main quest itself, I think is the weakest in the Elder Scrolls series, but it's still not bad. It's just very generic good versus evil. The characters and writing are rather weak, where Skyrim does shine as usual are its faction quests. However, even these do take a small step back from, say, Oblivion. So, you know, that's it. That's Skyrim. I think it both simultaneously gets 
over and under hyped online. Skyrim is like the Marvel movie of Bethesda RPGs. Big, it's bombastic, and it's just fun and easy to play around with. There's a time and a place for media such as this. Not everything needs to be this super deep, complex experience. You can enjoy something that is easily digestible. However, we also can't go around acting like Skyrim is the greatest game to ever exist because it's not. But it is pretty damn fun, so that's why for me, Skyrim sits in A tier. Phantom, you storm cucks. Skibidi was fine until you rizzed along. Simpire was chill AF. If you weren't molding, I could have copped that whip and been halfway to Goonerfell. Now we have 2015's Fallout 4. This one was tough for me because my feelings for Fallout 4 have sort of been all over the place. There are things that I love and there are things that I hate. So for me, it sort of sits in the middle-ish in a B tier. Middle of the road for previous Bethesda standards. When it was first initially released, honestly, I could not get into it. It didn't seem to have that Bethesda magic, but it has grown on me a lot over time. You know, what really initially turned me off was Bethesda's decision to make Fallout 4's protagonist fully voiced. And don't get me wrong, I still think this is a massive blunder. Some of the magic of a Bethesda game is truly immersing yourself in the shoes of your character, who represents an absolute blank slate for you to just imprint yourself or however you want to act on. Now, in Fallout 4, that's kind of almost completely ruined. <laughs> There is no more inner dialogue in my head. I just pick one of the options and listen to my character blab out something completely different than I expected. This also leads to the dialogue choices themselves being shitty. The worst in any Bethesda game. The options are limited to positive, negative, sarcastic, and question every single fucking time. There are also no skill checks outside of your standard speech checks at all, in or out of dialogue. Sorry, I, I did look this up. I think there are a few, but literally like only three or four. It's an insulting number. No checking for repair or intelligence or perception, anything like that. There aren't any general skills anymore as well. There are your special stats, sure, but you know, very, 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 very rarely can you solve a problem by saying having high intelligence or a high repair skill. Also, let's talk about the settlement and base building. This also really disappoints me because I'm just not interested in this survival shit in my Bethesda game. And it seems like Bethesda took a lot of time developing it. It was again, just another shitty decision. And you know, I tried it and yeah, sure, it's, it's not bad, but it's not why I'm playing a Fallout game. It's not to build up a series of bases across the wasteland. And now everything else in Fallout 4 it's actually not that bad. You know, outside of scrapping the skills, the perk and leveling system as a whole was dumbed down a bit, but I think it was streamlined in an effective way that I still do find enjoyable. I just hope they bring back the old skill system so they can include more skill checks or maybe have skill checks just be based on the special stats. I'm okay with that too. And you know, the writing, it might not be awful, but because the dialogue sucks, it kind of feels awful. However, the main story itself is quite good. Nothing too crazy, but it is good. There is a fair amount of moral gray areas and existential questioning with the idea around the synths and the Institute that I really enjoy. The companions in Fallout 4 are probably the best here in any Fallout game. Actually, I think maybe tied with New Vegas, but they are quite strong here and each have their own storylines, which I very much appreciate. Actually, I think they are a little bit better here in Fallout 4. And then the Commonwealth itself is fun to explore with some memorable side quests and locations. Like one area, the Glowing Sea or whatever, is a just completely blasted, irradiated hellscape. The gameplay and shooting is the best it's ever felt in a Fallout game. The weapons feel great and the weapon modding is fantastic. I don't like building bases, but damn, do I like building a cool weapon to go blast some ghouls with. Oh, and how they handled power armor. That's a fantastic idea. I really hope that sticks into Fallout 5. You know, so, you know, with all these positives, I have warmed up to Fallout 4 over time, and I have had a lot of fun with it. Far Harbor is also like an S tier DLC, so that did help out a ton. With Fallout 4, it just felt like they took a few steps in the right direction, but then just some massive leaps back. But because of all that, it's gonna sit in just the good B tier. Definitely one of the most approachable Fallout games, so it, it is easy to recommend 
to just about anyone. All right, Fallout 76, uh, F tier. Yeah, uh, Bethesda, stop fucking around with multiplayer. Moving on with my life. Thank you. And it's our biggest one yet. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. It allows us to have 16 times the detail and even view distant weather systems across the map. Finally, we have 2023's Starfield. Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. I did a full review on this game and I gave it a 7.5. And since going back and playing a lot of the older Bethesda titles, I do think I was just a bit too easy on Starfield. And in terms of a Bethesda RPG, I do believe it's lacking some critical components. So because of that, Starfield is going to get a C tier from me. I think Starfield is decent, but it does live in the shadow of a lot of these games above it. And before I say why, I do want to say on a personal level, I still do very much enjoy Starfield. Maybe it's the Bethesda fanboy in me, but I have over 100 hours in this game and I still enjoy playing it. And this might be why I initially gave it a 7.5. But yeah, you know, after thinking on it and playing the older games, a lot of the magic here is missing. And just because I personally enjoy something, that doesn't mean I can't admit and recognize its faults. So now I'm feeling like I'd probably give it like a 6.5, maybe a 7 at best. You know, I really, I don't think it's a terrible game like some people make it out to be. But can it be boring? Yes. Does it have too many load screens? Yes. Is it completely devoid of the world design and exploration that makes Bethesda games so special? Yes. And this is unfortunately all true. However, Starfield does a few things very, very well that I think have hooked me and can hook some people. That's the thing with Starfield. It's a game of some very, very high highs and then some very, very low lows. The shipbuilding is fantastic. The guns are fantastic. The gunplay and shooting is fantastic. The most surprising thing for me is that the dialogue is fantastic. There are so many skill checks and options here. Starfield went back to a voiceless protagonist, and obviously that was mwah, a fantastic decision. But yeah, the dialogue and writing here is some of the best in a Bethesda game, period. It's, it's just such a huge shame that they did all that, but then they completely stripped out the exploration and wonder that makes Bethesda games so special. A huge part of every Fallout and Elder Scrolls game is the setting and the world. Wandering around and stumbling upon a new quest or finding a cool location. There are some cool locations in Starfield, sure. Probably only like four or five. But they just feel like these isolated little bubbles rather than a part of a setting as a whole. Which is what they are. They are separated by light years of space and procedurally generated shit. But you know, that doesn't make it enjoyable or fun. Bethesda really needed to find a way to make Starfield's universe feel more cohesive. Because right now, it just feels disjointed. And yeah, like a fuck ton of loading screens and menus do not help. Take the Mass Effect trilogy, for example. It was structured fairly similarly to Starfield, with a handful of curated locations on specific planets you could visit all across a galaxy. However, this makes more sense for Mass Effect because it's a much more focused and on-rails experience. Bethesda games are designed around freedom and sandbox, so, so this open world structure doesn't make sense. It also helps that the Mass Effect universe and lore is much more interesting and Starfields is kind of boring. I do wonder what Starfield could have been if Bethesda embraced a more fantasy sci-fi approach. I'm talking, you know, aliens, uh, empires, the whole shebang. Also, I do need to mention, Upon making this video, Bethesda actually released a fairly big update with the Rev 8 Rover. And honestly, it is a big step in the right direction. Does it fix the game? No, but it does make the exploration much more enjoyable, even though what you are finding out there is still nothing. And in classic Bethesda fashion, this update also completely broke the planet skins in my game. So, uh, yeah. 
rendering it kind of unplayable for now. Like, do they even have people test these updates that they have they ruined fallout 4 recently too like the load times are insane regardless of these faults i still do like starfield i did almost give it a b but i do recognize it's really not gonna be for everyone it's definitely not gonna be for all their core bethesda fans as it does strip out what i believe to be a core pillar of the bethesda experience but it still does a lot of things very, very well. But because of that, yeah, unfortunately Starfield sits in C tier. It's personally my least favorite game on this list. I mean, not considering 76. I'm really hoping that their DLC coming out soon, Shattered Space, can help it out and maybe boost it up to that B tier. Bethesda usually does a pretty good job with DLCs, but we will see. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronoun! <laughs> Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Cause that's all we fucking know! Cause we're boring! We're so fucking boring! Phew! Alright, are you still with me? I'm about to fall asleep myself. That was a long one. You can tell that I have played a lot of Bethesda games because, well, I had a lot to say about them. And you know, I love Bethesda. They'll always have a special place in my heart. But yeah, they've been fucking up lately. They've been slipping further and further down this tier list. And you know, actually, Fallout 76 is an F tier in their most recent Starfield, so I guess they did go up a notch here. They took a small step forward, but still. Their recent games are all at the bottom. And let's talk about some of the other big takeaways here. One is all the Elder Scrolls titles being in A tier. And yeah, that's right. I don't think Bethesda has quite created that S tier Elder Scrolls game. Now, they are all great, but each game on here has at least one glaring issue that holds it back. Morrowind's gameplay, Oblivion's leveling, and Skyrim's lack of complexity. I guess I could say Skyrim's simplicity. Now, which one is my favorite? <sighs> That's tough. I would think I have to say Oblivion. Morrowind is just a bit too dated for my taste and Skyrim is a bit too simple. Oblivion sits in a good middle spot for me. Plus it is the first Bethesda game I ever played. So it really takes me back. Also the other big elephant in the room, Fallout 3 versus Fallout New Vegas. These are my two favorite Bethesda RPGs. And although I do think both are fantastic, I love them both, I think I have to give my favorite to Fallout New Vegas. Move that up, there we go. Also move Oblivion up here, yeah. And I think I like Skyrim more, so that's a good order. That's a good order there, I like that. And I think New Vegas is generally the more popular choice as yeah, it, it improves a ton on Fallout 3. However, the area of New Vegas does not quite feel as cohesive and well-designed as the Capital Wasteland. So I think there is an argument to be had in Fallout 3's superiority, but for me, just the writing and the way the story plays out in New Vegas, it makes it a timeless classic. The world is less cohesive, Sure, but it's vibrant and goofy and just so much fun to sink into. Which yes, that makes a game developed by Obsidian Entertainment my favorite Bethesda RPG of all time. <laughs> the irony. Hello darkness, my old friend. So anyways, I've blabbed enough. This is probably gonna be a super long video. So if you stuck with me, Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys around, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.